very quickly. The third scriptural model according to scripture, the kind of prayer that every believer can engage in the place of prayer is called the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. The prayer of inquiry. This is the kind of prayer you pray when you don't know what to do. When you are in confusion. When you are at a, a, a central point in your destiny. Navigating seasons. Ending one season and beginning another. And David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? I don't want to take a foolish decision in my destiny. I am a warrior, but I can't take life for granted. And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover. There is such a thing as the prayer of inquiry. Hallelujah. The secret to engaging this kind of prayer is patience. 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 God speaks, but he's not always speaking. Hear me, Koinonia. God speaks, but he's not always speaking. You were created in his image. You speak, but you are not always speaking. Most people think God is a talkative who is just talking and just tune your radio, you hear him. It's a lie. Human beings are not like that. God is not like that. You would hear the Bible say, on the fifth day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came came he says until his word came the word tried him yours is to be patient are we together it is the absence of this prayer that has caused pain in the life of many people i will tell you why there is a way that cement right unto a man there is a way there is a job that cement right are we together there is a country that cement right unto a man there is a local government that cement right. There is a state that cement right. There is a business that cement right. The Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Father, should I pursue? Should I pursue? This door is open before me, but should I pursue? I have taught you. Don't just enter doors carelessly because they are opened. Find out who opened it and find out where the door is leading to. Because even the prison, you enter a prison through a door. So that you don't see a door open and you say, thank you, Jesus. You enter and find out that all that are there are walls and you can't go back again. Prayer of inquiry. Father, all this anointing you are putting upon my life, is it for ministry? Not just that people come and say the way you are now. I'm surprised you are not yet a general of You say, you mean it? Tell me more. Say this, everything is on you. It's written, general of you now go and open a ministry and you will be disappointed. Nothing respects you. Not men, not spirits, not demons. And you'll be wondering, oh God, what am I doing? After five years of struggle, God will say you've been on your own. I've been trying to tell you. But every time you go to pray, you don't allow me to speak. You speak to me and walk away. As soon as you are done telling me what you want to say, Amen. And you are out. You are, as you are saying the amen, you are closing the door. The prayer of inquiry requires patience. Number two, the prayer of inquiry requires silence. When you pray, sometimes you are still, then you will know. The Bible says, be still and know. Be still and know. There are times will be noisy to speak with energy. But there are times, let me tell you this. Is the reason why you should not be religious when you are walking with God. You can go to the place of prayer and shout for one hour and suddenly a grace comes upon you and you don't have the energy to shout again. Don't fight it. Sit quietly. Something is about to come. But because we have not been trained, you just feel, ah, I'm not, is it sleep? It's not necessarily sleep. In that stillness, His Majesty comes. A scripture comes. A word comes. An instruction comes check a YouTube video, an instruction comes, check this scripture, an instruction comes, read this book. Sometimes the instruction can just come as the name of someone, the name of a sermon, even if it's a sermon you've listened to before. You finish praying for hours, struggling your rent, everything, and whilst you are seated there, 
a testimony you had one day in koinonia just comes to your spirit is how god speaks this grace called favor and it becomes strong upon your heart god is saying listen there my voice for you is in that sermon although you were there when it was preached you did not hear my voice there now you listen to it you will hear something i will tell you that you did not hear that day there are many ways god speaks to us because our hearing are in levels are we together there are times that people become too noisy god cannot even tell them anything they finish talking to god and then they close the door their spirits are too noisy even their dream life cannot be an opportunity for god to minister to them i have a teaching series uh, you know supernatural experiences dreams visions trances i will teach you because most of you that thing you are calling a dream is an attack notice everything you have been seeing when you stand up and do it it gets you into trouble everything you see as an instruction in the dream you act upon it you either have a problem with police or have a problem with people it's an attack when god speaks he speaks peace when you get instructions in the realm of the spirit that continue to cause you trouble perpetually you can measure the voice of god by the peace and progress it brings which is what most people don't have don't just wake up from a dream and act everything you saw there. No. There are rules for both interpreting and acting on dreams. And the central rule is submitting everything to the word of God. Apostle, I had a dream. In the dream, I gave somebody my car. Hold on. Before you part with your car and now get into trouble. Don't assume it means God says you should give the car. We need to measure the spiritual life of the person who had the dream first. To verify what you had with wise counsel make war most people have gotten into trouble today let me tell you this i hope you are learning the prayer of inquiry there are people today who have believed a lie and they will they would die believing that lie because the devil manipulated dreams manipulated visions are we together and because they do not understand how to engage this prayer of inquiry the prayer of inquiry should i pursue should I overtake? Someone learn to ask God that question. No. You don't ask him for You can't ask God, should I wear a white dress or a black dress? God will say, no, don't go and listen to say, uh, uh, apostles teaching success systems. And I teach you there how to use your mind. Are we together? Yeah. You can't come and meet God and say, should I wear a yellow shoe or a black shoe? No. I'm talking of destiny defining decisions. You want to carry your wife and children out of Nigeria? And the only thing that becomes a green light is visa stamped on your, your passport. That's a risk. That's a risk. What if the destiny helpers of your children are close to you? You need to find out. Lord, should I pursue? When Satan wants to stop you from hearing the voice of God, he will surround you with good things. So that you will think that every good thing there is just God. And you will act upon good things till they destroy you. It's not only evil Satan uses to destroy people. When he tests you with evil and he sees you are sensitive, you will bring good. The most important thing is that he's interested in your destruction. Either with evil or good. Hallelujah. For someone, you are at a very prophetic season of your life. There are a number of areas in people's lives where you have to take time to dig. Matters of marriage, children, matters, look at me, matters of finances, matters of job and career. Are we together? Matters of where you will stay, what you will be doing, the kind of call, your assignment, these major areas. Oh, you must pray, you must pray. You must pray. Lie down and roll from left to right and say, Father, speak. Speak, oh, speak. Speak. Am I an evangelist or am I a pastor? This one prophesied that I'm an evangelist. Next tomorrow, they said I'm a pastor. Be careful. This one said my wife is yellow. This other one said my wife is black, oh. My wife is short. My wife is tall. Very soon, you'll be like Solomon. You will marry one, 700 wives and, and uh, how many? Uh, 300 concubines. All in the name of prophecy. And they don't have to be fake. We see in part. So you go to God and cry your heart out. Open my eyes, oh God. Are we together? This job gives me 200,000. This one gives me 150,000. But uh, common sense said I should go here. 
and you miss a season let me tell you not every season is easily recoverable i can tell you that are we together don't be careless and think some seasons i'm now please don't don't be offended and, and i'm not here to forgive me for instance missing it out in things like marriage is not easy it, it will not be without scars you get what i'm saying now god tells you three children you say no i know i'm going to give birth to seven and the remaining four cause headache for you you almost want to kill them yourself because god told you his recommendation but he will never force you i know what i'm saying is funny but listen carefully to what i'm telling you take out time and pray Take out time and pray. Koinonia, take out time and pray. Sensitive things in your life. Parents, which school should my child go to? Don't just say this school is a nice school. They will go and learn something that becomes the reason why they become a pain to your heart. Are we together? Lord, who should be the closest friend to me? Not, I like this person. Person is just nice. And before you know it, you draw demons, familiar spirits, and all kinds of causes to your destiny. The implication of friendship is that there is a sharing of spirits. Let me tell you, associations have prophetic implications. If you don't believe me, save Johnny. I will be here to correct you in the future again. Very destiny implicating consequences. If Jonah is in your boat, you will lose your goods, even if you're a hardworking businessman. You will almost lose your life till you throw him out. But if Jesus is in your boat, don't worry. Even if the storm rocks your boat, your confidence is that Jesus is in your boat. When Lot left Abraham, he was not unrighteous, but he still suffered. Is someone learning now? You don't like what I'm saying? Like it, oh, like it seriously. I'm teaching you this is a school of prayer. Please go and write down some major areas in your life and flog it out. You need to fast fast. You will not die. Lord, help me. I've been seeing America in my vision. What does that mean? It does not mean go to America. It can mean your helper is in America. Or it can mean intercede for America. You can go to get a visa and for 10 years, you, your life refused to move forward because based on what you saw, truly, you had the dream. You saw America and you assumed, you gave it an interpretation from the flesh. Mm. Koinonia is quiet. Pray. Pray. As a husband, hold the hand of your wife and pray. We are fasting today. Lord, what is the next step? Even in ministry, don't assume. You've heard my story. For three years, I struggled with God to leave Zaria and come to Abuja. I didn't want to. I mean, God had glorified himself greatly in Zaria. People were literally coming from all over the world. Can you imagine? In spite of the security situation. I mean, it was at a point in ministry, you would say you had seen the grace of God. What is Abuja again? And you go to pray. Three days before the inaugural service in Abuja here, I still went to God in prayer and fasting. Lord, if for any reason I'm human, if it is my carnal mind, I vow unto you that I will close that in inaugural service. And I meant it. I meant it. I will tell you something. I, I wanted to leave that to announce it at the end of the service, but I'll say it here. I had a meeting with the leaders and we're having to shift and suspend our November conference. Um, we'll have to shift it to next year. I'll tell you what happened. When I announced that I, it was already on the plan, I think two weeks or three weeks ago, before Sound of Revival, I started having an unrest in my spirit. And the unrest was not for the other, it was for the November conference. I just felt like um, something wasn't right. I went to God, I prayed, I fasted, and that, 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 that um, what they call it lack of peace cessation of peace I took out time to pray and then that was when in the place of prayer the Lord began to tell me that no I should shift the November conference and I said this is your ministry this is your whatever it is I called the leaders immediately I told them gentlemen we're shifting November conference and all of that after sound of revival whatever 
November conference here, we shift it till the time God allows. As simple as that. The prayer of inquiry. I'm saying this so that you would, I'm not teaching you what I'm not practicing. For someone, you can have five wins, but the sixth one will cancel all five because the sixth one was scheduled, sometimes not necessarily by Satan, because you need two things, the word of the Lord and the timing for its manifestation. If you have a word from God alone without the timing, you will still fail because the power comes at the time. At the time. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Isn't it a mystery? Which ministry do you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, that has not hosted its own conference within its space and yet is holding conferences around the world, parking stadiums and places? It is against the natural sequence of how ministry is done. I'm not in ignorance. I've read books. I've sat under intelligent people. This is the way of the spirit. The very first conference Koinonia organized was in Manchester. Go and read any Bible school of ministry book. It is foolishness of the highest order. You don't get up and organize your first conference to be an international conference. Then the largest indoor arena in the United Kingdom. So don't be angry when sometimes people don't understand you. It's the way of the spirit. But you see, if it is God, he will always sign on it. You will see the signature of God upon it. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this so that don't become too conventional with your life that you crash down. You are special. There is a way God is working with you and you must respect his dealings with your life. I don't know who came to church to hear God tonight, but hear him all. Hear him through these words you are receiving. The prayer of inquiry. Someone pray in one minute and say, Lord, guide my steps. Order my steps. Take a minute to pray. Order my steps. I'm at a pivotal point. Those outside, are you praying? All the overflows. I am at a critical point in my life. No assumptions. The mistake of great men is assuming that God is always with what they are doing. Just because you succeeded yesterday in ministry, in life, in family, does not mean that you can invent any strategy and then succeed you must be malleable to the voice of the spirit per time per season otherwise you will crash land no matter how mighty you are nobody is too big to fall nobody is too big to fail nobody is too big to crash land if you cannot inquire from the lord and know what to do a major season of your life I tell you you can crash land in a way that it will look like you never rose up someone pray in one minute order my steps speak to me I am not a rebel my heart is malleable speak to me go ahead and pray how can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind his power at work in you changing everything in obedience to Christ recreating everything in obedience to Christ Directing everything. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. So, number one prayer model praying in the spirit. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You engage with faith in your heart. Number two, the faith filled declarations of scripture. The requirement you must be full of the word. Number three, the prayer of inquiry. The key here is patience. You must be patient with God. His word comes. It will not come when you want, but it will come. My soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Number four, the, second pray, the fourth prayer model revealed from scripture is called warfare prayer. Warfare prayer. Warfare prayer. Warfare prayer. Philippians 1.19. Warfare prayer. 
this is the realm of warfare and prophetic intercession for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus I know that this shall turn the prayer of deliverance the prayer that overturns things this is the kind of prayer you pray when it looks like the devil has scheduled seasons of attacks when seasons of attacks come to your life you engage warfare prayers that is true for you and can be true for your loved ones warfare prayer engaging the mystery of the blood breaking legal strongholds and covenants, warding off activities of familiar spirits that manipulate men, manipulate systems and structures to work against you as touching the purposes of God. It's in the place of prayer. You deal with this spirit, deal with yokes, deal with curses, deal with the ministry of wicked and unreasonable men. For not all men not do not have faith. There are men that are determined to work in partnership with Satan concerning your life. They vow that provided you are in this office, you must die. They don't just want you to lose your job. They don't mind you dying. Just because you are kind does not mean everybody is kind. There are people whose hearts have been seared with iron. They will watch your dead body and still thank God for it. Hell, I hope you believe that. You don't know how evil the heart of man is. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Wicked. Someone schedules your downfall and comes to stand together with those who are mourning it and say, you mean it? Who is this wicked person who did this? I pray for you. Anybody digging a pit this night, may they fall inside that pit. Anybody coming against your destiny in the spirit of a man, already in the palace, but digging for your downfall in the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer for you this warfare prayer, they will fall into their pit by themselves. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. I once had a story. It was a story that I saw online many years ago that somebody threw another person's neighbor inside a well. Maybe, I'm sure, maybe some of you may have had the story. Threw another person's neighbor out of envy inside the well. And the little child died there and by morning the woman came up was crying everybody went to fetch water and they found the child there and the woman who was part of that thing joined the people in mourning until on, upon investigation they found out what happened oh this woman has been treating me bad out of anger wickedness is not a natural thing in the heart of man is the is what happens when spirits possess men they can do things that they themselves later will say, ah, who did this thing like that? Spirits for you. That's why it's important for people to be born again. Your husband can turn and act like a beast. And while he's beating you, pounding you, beating you with the pregnancy and the child, you are looking, is this him? It can't be him. That's not the man you married. That's another spirit there. And then later on you counsel him and he says i'm sorry then he does it again you better bring him for koinonia bring him to koinonia quickly <laughs> let me balance it what of your wife too you come into the kitchen and you see her sitting and folding her arms where's my food which food you talk to me i will beat you here and you will see a woman with the strength of 10 men beat you and drag you as masculine as you are spirits for you this is one of the reasons why God raised us so to be instruments of help and mercy some of you when you came here you didn't even know the variety of spirits you carried anger jealousy pain all kinds of things and whilst you are seated some of those shouts you shout some of those falling you don't know what is living it's until you go back and see that you are back to your right mind. That anger is no longer there. Your grandfather was an angry man. Your father was an angry man. Now as a young man, you have beat your elder ones. You have beat your parents. You have beat your pastor. You have beat your classmates. It's a spirit. That kind of person, if he's not delivered, I assure you, he will end up in jail. Parents, let me tell you something. 
when you see your child's behavior beyond the threshold that discipline can afford bring them to church I'm telling you just bring them I know what to do with them bring them to church it takes the power of God you can correct when the spirit leaves doing a rehabilitation when the spirit is still there is a waste of time take it from me oh don't smoke again don't behave greet elders and the child says all right and you say say after me I'm a good boy now I'm a good boy now the junior loves mommy and all those things as soon as you are done by evening they call you from the police station to come and carry your child again it's a spirit I know you are laughing but I hope you get what I'm saying many people are under the influence of spirits they will not admit it but it is true there are behaviors that are beyond human behaviors human beings cannot be that wicked that jealous that wicked and one way Satan keeps you oppressed is making you live in denial he said no no my anger is just it's just once in a while it's just that it's a thing in our family I say it again if there is anything that is not of the Christ any spirit influence around your life I don't care whether you are a man of God you are a ministry you are whatever I pray for you if there is any influence producing manifestations that are not of the Christ tying down your life down in the name of Jesus be delivered now be delivered now are we together warfare spirits that cause all kinds of things a beautiful lady but nobody can ever come and say let me go and see your parents and you are wondering you are modest you are decent you love god are we together now the day anybody comes to say ah this lady where are your parents the next day you hear the person is dead and you think it's normal it happened to four or five people please open up your heart and cry anything that came with my background and my foundation that wants to follow me and ruin my life I come by the blood that's how you pray warfare prayer in the name of Jesus I may have come from a family of idol worship but the Bible says I've been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation the consequences of the sacrifices of yesteryears cannot be part of my life I consciously I cut myself away Families where men are fed by women, they never rise to a point. If you like her PhD, it's your wife that feeds you. It's in your wife's house you stay or in her parents' house you stay. My brother, it's not so. God establishes men. I hope you know spirits don't get tired. Don't think because they've been in your life since you were two years and now you are 35, they are tired. You are the only one who is tired. Those spirits are still energetic. They can stay through your lifetime except when power comes. Some of you may need to take the responsibility. The victory that is in Christ is real, but it does not come upon you without you engaging it. For the same reason that I stated when I started, you have a will. God cannot assume you are tired of it. You must verbalize it in prayer and appropriate it in prayer. I have met preachers who love God with integrity and character, but they will never admit that the reason their ministries are stunted is because there are strange powers that sit upon their destinies. They will argue it to their detriment. Individuals have spirits assigned to them. Regions have spirits assigned to them. That's why you see repetition of patterns according to regions. Irresponsibility, anger, laziness. Are we together? All these kinds of things. I don't want you to feel condemned and I don't want you to feel sad. I know a family where all of them are hard working. The, the men are diligent. They start businesses. You don't fail when you start. You only rise up to a point where you want to sit down to be celebrated. Something happens and you must go down. Go to Europe, the spirit follows you there. Go to America, it follows you there. Because wickedness is all over the world. I'm praying for someone again. I don't know what pattern you have observed. Maybe your loved ones have not observed it. But as a Christian, with maturity, you have seen that this pattern of untimely death. Maybe people die early. The men die early. The women die early. The men struggle. They love Jesus. Or something happens. They never have children in their matrimonial home. They only have children outside of wedlock before they get married. Everybody don't feel condemned I'm helping you 
a woman with five children from five different men is a spirit. It doesn't mean the person is bad. Some of them can be the most sincere people. Grandmother raped by someone. Mother raped by someone. The daughter raped by someone. In the name of Jesus, any pattern around your life that will not let you go, it has tied you down. You are called, but is refusing to allow your bishop to find expression. I curse it tonight by the blood. 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 Every pattern of untimely death around anyone here, you have seen your loved ones die. And that thing you know is still in the family. You see it in your dreams. You go to bed and you see dead people coming. What is your business with those who have died? I say it again. Be delivered from that influence. How about those? Their good is always evil spoken of. They are always well intentioned. But everybody suspects them. Everybody. A good woman, you cook and everybody say you want to kill someone. And your heart is sincere. There is a spirit that makes the good of a man become evil. I pray for you. Every veil on your face that misrepresents you. When Satan wants to destroy people, he uses your face in their dreams. They wake up seeing you and they think you are a witch. I decree and declare, may that operation of darkness come to an end now. Please be seated. Warfare prayers. There are people today who have been hated by literally nations. Hated all across. You know why? Because someone goes to bed and the devil uses their face and they wake up saying, ah, so this woman wants to press me and kill me. So this man wants to kill me. Whereas that is one of the most sincere people. They come to the office and the man says, good afternoon. He says, no, you are leaving my office today. What did I do, sir? The man cannot say it. And sometimes, with all due respect, this is where we men of God must learn how to walk in the spirit. So that you don't just misinterpret prophetic things. When such a person comes to meet you as a man of God and say, I had a dream. I saw the face of this woman and she was pressing me. You now seal it and say, ah, that's truly a witch. You imagine what happens if you come to church and the woman is sitting by your side. They say, praise the Lord, she's praying. You are saying, ah, this prayer, you are a witch. You would die here. There are so many people carrying foolish illusions in their minds. Drama, only their mind is acting. Are we together? They have a list of people they believe are witches. A list of others they believe are wizards. And they literally live their entire life in a war, like computer game, in their minds. An illusion. The Bible calls it cunningly devised fables. Hmm. Are we together? There are great friends who have been destroyed by these spirits. Destroyed by these spirits. You just have a dream. And in the dream, the devil manipulates the faces of people who are some of the greatest gifts in your life. And you see them and wake up and say, no. It doesn't mean when you see the face of someone, it automatically means that person is destroying you. You need to discern. Sometimes it's the deception of Satan. Are we together? What then happens to a man who lies down on the same bed with his wife and wakes up in the night and in a dream? The wife is pressing him. And then by morning, she says, honey, good morning. The man says, good morning, I've had you. And from that day, trouble that counseling cannot solve. Because the man cannot say, I think my wife is a witch. Your food is served. I bought my own from restaurant. I just want a change of a meal. And they start lying and dribbling the wife like that. But the real problem is that they saw a vision. And it was Satan that created that manipulation. And sometimes if they are not careful, they come to us men of God and we say, you know the solution? Go and read the book of Jonah. Whatever happened to Jonah, let that be what happens here. You see, you have, you have exempted yourself from trouble. You didn't say anything, but you said everything. May you never fall into the hand of unserious people. 
with all due respect that also includes ministers of the gospel may you not fall into the hand of ignorant preachers nobody deceive and confuse and waste your life and turn make a caricature out of your Christian experience because of ignorance and if there's anybody here you've been swayed around a battlefield was created as a result of ignorance may knowledge bring you stability in Jesus name I pray number four the fourth prayer model and then we'll stop ah huh? number what number one was what number two number three number four okay number five the prayer of thanksgiving the prayer of thanksgiving Colossians 4 2 4 2 let's hurry up Colossians 4 2 continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving Philippians 4 verse 6 be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving with thanksgiving let your request be made known do you know what it means to pray the prayer of thanksgiving it means it's, it's a manifestation of faith where you begin to thank God in advance so everything that you want to ask you ask it as if it's already given father I thank you in the name of Jesus because my day is blessed is someone learning now I thank you because my going out is blessed. I thank you because my coming in is blessed. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friends. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my business. I thank you for my office. Someone talk to me. I thank you for everything you are doing around my life. I decree and declare that thanksgiving, the voice of melody and thanksgiving will not depart from me. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very powerful. A man of God says thanksgiving is an application for more. How true? Thanksgiving. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. One more time, say, thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Learn to declare prayers with thanksgiving. In fact, it is a very worthy model to end your prayers with thanksgiving. Father, I thank you because I know that you've heard me. In John chapter 11, when Jesus was at the grave, the tomb of Lazarus, you would think he would cry and say, oh, this and that. After he was done crying, he thanked the Lord. He said, Father, I thank you, John 11, because you always hear me. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. That was the kind of prayer that Jesus used. You notice Jesus used prayer number five and then prayer number two. That's what brought Lazarus out. Prayer model number five, thanksgiving, and then number two, declarations. Lazarus, come forth. So we see these prayer models even in the life of Jesus himself. He said, Father, I thank you. You would not go before a tomb and be saying thank you. When you get there, the, the usual question, human question is, why, Lord? But he never made any inquiry prayer there. He just said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. Same thing happened when he was going to multiply five loaves and two fish. The Bible says he lifted it up and he gave thanks and he gave the disciples. He said, go and distribute it. I'm praying for someone. May you be thankful even in your prayer. Now, let me tell you this. Thanksgiving, this prayer demands a lot of thoughtfulness. You want to pray the prayer of thanksgiving, you must learn to count your blessings. You must learn to see the good that God has done in your life. Beyond the things you are expecting God for. Usually, thanksgiving starts from the things he has done past. And then you now connect to the things you hope and trust that he does in the present and the future. Are we together? Father, thank you because you are my God. Thank you for giving me a job not oh god you know the salary they slashed our salary now is it that you are not seeing no prayer of thanksgiving you find every good thing you know that god has done and you acknowledge it and thank him thank you yes the husband is not still behaving well but thank god you have a husband yes the children are not yet in school but thank god you have them father i give you thanks i bless you I bless you. You can turn it into a song. You can turn it into worship. Thanksgiving is powerful. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you are trusting God for a job, but don't forget your eyes are seeing, your ears are hearing, your hands can walk, your feet can walk. If you are grounded and they tell you you have stage four cancer, at that point, it's not a job you will pray for again. You will be gasping for life. Someone in the hospital who had a job but did not have health, now you have health but you don't have a job. 
So you thank God. The prayer of thanksgiving demands that you become discerning and thoughtful. Thank God. I've not gotten a contract, but at least I have a company that is functional. And I know God will do it. Father, thank you because I know you have gone ahead of me. I thank you because I know that there are benefits that you have given to me. I may not see the wind, I may not see the rain, but I thank you because my band shall be filled with plenty. I give you all the praise. This is how to pray the prayer of thanksgiving. It is powerful when it is healing when you thank God. Because it does something to you. You take your mind away from what has not been done to what God is doing. You know, it's a human thing to always see what God has not done. God, you gave me tea, but there's no bread, there's no butter. And God says, focus on the tea and thank me. And while you are thanking him, you will turn around and see that there's bread, there's butter, and there's even a bakery. God for you. Thanksgiving attracts. It attracts more of what you are thanking God for. It attracts the more of God. One way to ask God for things is to give thanks for what he is giving. Someone again say thank you, Jesus. One more time say thank you, Jesus. I'm going to jump one and head straight to the final discussion. There was a particular subtopic that I wanted us to look at, but forgive me, I have to jump that. I want to go straight to how God answers prayers. Very quickly, how God answers prayers. How God answers prayers. We need to know how prayers manifest. The Bible assures us according to Mark 11 and verse 24 that whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, we should believe we will receive it and the Bible assures us that we will have it. In Matthew 7, 7 and 8, the Bible says, Ask and ye shall receive, verse 8 says, For everyone that asketh, receive it. So if the Bible has this kind of assurance, it then means when we pray, we have an assurance. What I wanted to teach us, unfortunately, uh, was how to pray a fervent and effectual prayer. How to pray with passion and how to pray word compliant prayer. How to pray according to the will of God. A very important point, but we'll have to jump it for now. We'll look at it another time. But refer to my message Effective prayer dynamics. Effective prayer dynamics. Effective prayer dynamics. There, I teach on the subject that I just skipped now. Effective prayer dynamics. You can get that on Koinonia Global. God bless you. So how does God answer prayers? The Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. There are essentially three ways. Please listen. Answers to prayer manifest using three platforms there are three platforms essentially for the manifestations of answered prayer so i know by faith that god has answered my prayer the prayer for anything whatsoever but how do i receive it physically this is what i want to teach you now number one the first platform for answered prayers is called supernatural manifestations supernatural manifestations that means God gives you peace, God gives you joy, God gives you healing, God gives you deliverance. These are all supernatural manifestations. When you pray, the answers come directly, supernaturally, as peace to your troubled heart, as joy, as healing. Say for instance, if you or anyone who is anointed prays, and let's say you have pain, the pain can leave immediately. You know the prayer has been answered because the manifestation has come supernaturally though. Daniel chapter 3, when you read from verse 24 to 30, the Bible tells us about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were thrown into the burning furnace of fire. And the Bible tells us that their deliverance was instant. We saw the manifestation of God's hand. They had made bold declarations. They declared to the king that God was going to save them and that even if he did not save them, they would not bow to his image. And the Bible says they threw them there. And when they threw them, they were answers to the prayer immediately. It was supernatural. They saw the fourth man who was there. And the Bible says that their bands were loose and they were walking freely in the midst of the fire. The appearance of the fourth being like the son of God. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says that there were men who the fire had no power over. 
So you can receive supernatural manifestations. This is common in the area of healing, common in the area of deliverance, common in the area of trouble within your spirit. You cannot hold peace. You cannot hold joy. You cannot hold healing. You cannot hold deliverance. Yet their effect can be very real. You are suffering from cancer. God heals you. The results show immediately. You go to the hospital and they will tell you like the person who shared the testimony of the enlarged heart. You see that a miracle happens and you see that your heart returns to normal. The madman in Gadara. A miracle happened and he returned immediately to his sound mind. The man at Gate Beautiful. So God answers prayers. Prayers manifest as supernatural manifestations. I'm praying for someone already in the name of Jesus. Every supernatural manifestation, whether healing, whether deliverance, whether peace to your troubled heart, whether a restoration of your joy, I'm praying now in the name of Jesus that you have it in this place. You receive it here and now. Shout a believing amen.